Silk Road 1 and 2. Once they closed the Silk Road 2 in 2014, in 2015 they came up with Silk Road 3 and they said that it's still open and you can start using the Silk Road 3. So how many of you have ever visited Dot Onion websites? So all the dark net sites are dark websites. We will be having the extension of Dot Onion. That is where we are talking about Tor. Free software for en enabling anonymous communication. So we are having lot many free softwares which are available. I am not here to tell you how to go ahead because this is not a conference to how to go ahead and get the access. But still we will be discussing about how the contents are being accessed to some extent. Because we will be talking about all the positivity of how the dark web has started and how we can use it in a positive way and how it has been becoming a bigger part when it comes to the cyber crime. Because when it comes to cyber crime, the biggest challenge in India is one is they are not still getting into the right technology what is being used. And the second thing is we are lacking with the legal aspects. And the third important thing is internet doesn't have any barrier saying that this is my India internet, this is my Japan internet. So going ahead and backing up our security becomes very important. So as my friend gave the update, this was originally developed on behalf of US intelligence community. Today it has been used by criminals, hacktivists on law enforcement agencies. Users can remain anonymous but still you can go ahead and figure out who is doing what if you are very smart enough to get into the dark web, deep web, stick into it to the layer 4, get on to the layer 5 and see that what is the email address they are using if you are able to crack in it. It's a challenge anyways. It's not so easy that I'll just get in there and they will be having the email popped up over there and I'll be able to see that. It's not that easy. Resources can remain hidden because we know that all the traffic, whatever is traveling here has been encrypted and we will be not even knowing the source over there. This is a slide. If uh, so many of you have accessed the tour, you will be knowing it. How does it look? how we are, we will be using that. Once you get the tar downloaded, this will be our next slide which says the browser is configured to you so that you can go ahead and start browsing the content, whatever you are looking in the dark web. So this is what I was talking. How does tar work? When allies wants to go ahead and start communicating or getting into the dark web, how is he going to do it? The client will be checking the path, random path for the destination server. This is what we are talking about the Silk Road, the destination part which are encrypted and which will go ahead and hit the server. Because once you have the software, it will be going ahead and fetching all the paths as we talk about in the routers. It will be checking all the routes in it. It will be telling you what is the shortest path, what is the secured path, everything, then it will be getting into that. So this is where it will be redirecting and here it is showing you the secured path and as well as unencrypted path also. I don't have much time so I need to run through the slides. You need to excuse me. These are the directories what we are talking about. What are being sold and what type of the market we are talking about? We are talking about the drugs, we are talking about the books, we are talking about the data, miscellaneous softwares, hacking, fraud, security, we are talking about killing someone, we are talking about taking the data, we are talking about making money and we are talking about even hacking the bitcoins also. We do have the end users, I am talking about the experts who sit in the dark web where you can hire them to go ahead and hack the bitcoins. And how much they charge? That is a million dollar question because each person charges according to his own calculation. This is the very first important thing. Typically requires a registration. 
because whenever you want to get in and join there, you need to have an invitation. So if you're, sorry? <laughs> That's a good example. So when you want to get in there, you need to have an invitation, a link on the other side, not difficult to obtain. But if you're having a friend who is already there and who can invite you, please look in with your next seat if he's having the access in the dark web and if he can give an invitation then wonderful or else this is the first difficult part which you need to go through to join. Some marketplaces are very sophisticated because seller rating, their profile, their history, the discussion groups because in this we will be having a discussion groups also where they will be talking about what is happening over there because you need to understand one important thing that whoever is getting into the dark web they will be technically very strong first thing. Second thing, they will be the people who will be trying to look on what is the opposite person is also doing. To some extent, they will be trying to monitor you. So we need to be very careful what is the time doing. And the most important thing is you need to go ahead and understand that whenever you are using the system for accessing the dark web, how secure your system is. So you need to understand what is that you are getting in. This is the typical market I am talking about. BTC exchange, the Dash exchange and both are the cryptocurrencies we are talking about. Dash is the dark coin what we call it as and the BTC is nothing but our Bitcoin. This is the pirated softwares. I have just masked a couple of names over there. As I told, we need to use it in a positive way. So typically I am showing you the screen of the dark web contents, what it has, so whoever had the curiosity, yes. So I am having the last two minutes to finish it, so I need to rush. So as I told you, they utilize the Bitcoin to conduct the transaction. How does the Bitcoin work? I think most of the people sitting here you know about the Bitcoins and if somebody is having the Bitcoins you are the luckiest one now because you know that the rate is going high. Bitcoin can be bought or sold through online exchanges in these sites. They can go ahead and see how much the Bitcoin is costing, what is the rating which is happening, whether they want to sell it, purchase it, whatever it is. Uh, this is the features of Bitcoin. As I told you, I don't have much of time, so I'll just take you, take you through the important one. I told you about the risk level, what you will be facing if you are accessing the dark web or if you are going ahead and holding the bitcoins also because you don't know tomorrow if the rate falls down. So mitigating, how do you think mitigating these abuse in the dark net can be done? These are the some points I just noted down because there are more work what we need to do from our end also because each of Indian citizen is responsible for any cyber crime which happens here. Are we not? Because we never think about sharing somebody else sensitive data but our sensitive data at least we will think twice. If it is somebody else we will be going ahead and sharing it. We will say array are it's not mine. So sorry, as I have very less time, I need to rush it through. I'm here till evening. So any questions on dark web, bitcoins, apart from getting into it and purchasing, surely I can respond to you. And when it comes to the cyber crime, I can just give you an input saying that cyber crime, when it comes to the bitcoins and when it comes to the dark web, it has been raised more than 700% since three years. So, we need to understand what is that we are doing when we are going ahead and accessing the dark web or going ahead and purchasing the bitcoins to go ahead and respond it to someone with the bitcoins. Because most of the ransom attacks, whatever we had, they had a response of saying that you need to pay me three or four bitcoins. So I'll be closing the sessions have saying that have the good bit bitcoins in your pocket and enjoy that. And when it comes to the cyber crime plus any crime which you say that somebody else is been becoming the victims, please respond and stand with them to say that you need to go ahead and report it first. So thank you so much. As I had a less time, I was supposed to close it. And it's a wonderful uh, time with you people discussing about it. Thank you so much 
for NCRDC team also. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Yeah. I just have a question. I need your inputs on the zero net environment, which is the next store people have been assumed about it. Mm. In what ways? You want it in a positive or a negative ways? I need it in a positive way. It's a decentralized platform, then a Tor relay is being connected, and then a BIP 32-bit encryption as a URL interface, <coughs> scrapping the traditional Onion interface. Yes, of course, but when it comes to the location where you are accessing it, I would initially say that how secured is your connection, first thing, because whether you have a network which has been monitored, are you sitting in a network which is having a security operation center where the traffic is being monitored for you? Ma'am, here the environment is like it's being connected to a Tor relay. Uh -huh. There is no kind of a database exchange. There is a single user <coughs> database which is a, a public key private key concept is being uh, implemented. Uh -huh. And the traffic is being taken into a localhost system. Uh -huh. And you have been prompted in a localhost environment. And uh -huh. that is being, and that uh, is being encrypted via BIP 32 bit encryption, that is of Bitcoin. Okay. And then that is being redirect, redirected in a Tor environment into a peer to peer system. Means I will be able to access those environment if a peer is being active. Okay, peer has been active, but... Through a Tor interface. Yes, to some extent I can say that you have the keys with you, you are going ahead and using your private keys to go ahead and sign in over there, have the connection established. Once the peer has been active, you will be going ahead and doing the communication, right? right. To some extent I can say up to 70% I can assure that. 70%. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> 70% is assured. One more issue, issue is this, Bitcoin is getting stored on deep web. Yes. Excuse me. I'd like to request you to kindly take that up question offline as we uh, so just much. keep on our time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful presentation. I'd now like to invite on stage Mr. G.B. Sheikh, Assistant Vice President, SOC, CTRLS Data Centers Limited, to kindly come and give away the memento to Ms. Shubhamangala. Thank you, Mr. G.B. Sheikh, and thank you, Mr. Shubha Mangala. Thank you, Mr. G.B. Sheikh, and thank you, Mr. Shubha Mangala.